Hi, welcome to Stamp with Jenny. Today I'm going to share with you some watercolor basics and a watercolor pencil worksheet. We'll be using our Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils. This set comes with 13 of our color collection colors and they're really great to work with. So let's get started. You're going to need an aqua painter or a blender pen and I like to have a piece of paper towel handy so that I can adjust the amount of water in my aqua painter simply by loading the tip and then taking off the excess. And of course you need your watercolor pencil. I'm going to use Melon Mambo for this first one and I wanted to show you the varying pressure. I'm going to start lightly and that's just really light strokes with some space in between and then I'm going to go to medium which is going to be a little heavier and be closer together and then my heavy is going to be burnished which means it's going to be solid color and you're not going to see the paper through it. I'm going to take my aqua painter and I am then going to blend the color so that you can see and once again I'm cleaning off the aqua painter in between so I'm not transferring color. So there's my heavy and my medium and hopefully you can see this light because it just has a hint of color. And of course depending on how much water you add you're going to end up with a bolder color or a lighter color. And remember your watercolor pencils get very vibrant when they're wet but they'll become lighter when they dry. The next thing we're going to do is layering, and layering is a technique that you can use in order to um, create a rainbow effect, and so I'm going to take my Real Red, my Daffodil Delight, and my Pacific Point, and I'm going to start with my Real Red here above, the, the red, and I am going to create a wash and then my yellow in the center and finally my blue and I'm adding the color fairly heavy so that you can see the wash that happens and the color effect as they blend so I'm going to load my pen my aqua pen and I am going to start um, with the lightest color and I'm going to move that color into the red. Okay, and that's so that your color values stay the same um, for the center here. And then I'm going to start in the center again and I'm going to move it into my blue all the way out to my edge. And there you have a layering effect where you can blend those colors in between to create your orange and your green. The next step is going to be a portable paint and that's a real simple technique. It simply is layering on some color in a little patch and you're going to burnish this so this is fairly heavy and then you're going to pick up, add some water to your point and load that and pick it up like you would those colors that we had as children from the little trays of color. So that's a real quick way to pick up color and add it to your picture the way you'd like to. Okay, the next one is a hard edge and this one takes a little more time because you have to allow it to dry in between. So what I'm going to do is color my Rich Razzleberry on one side and then I'm going to take my Tempting Turquoise and start where I left off I'm sorry this is my Bermuda Bay and color the other direction now I'm going to take my Aqua Painter and I am going to wet this side here with the Rich Razzleberry and I'm going to blend those colors like I want them but I'm not going to touch this Bermuda Bay portion and I am going to allow this to dry as I show you the soft edge technique here and then we'll come back to this okay the soft edge I'm going to use the same two colors so you can see the difference I'm also going to start with my, with my rich razzleberry and I'm going to add the Bermuda Bay 
Now I've given you lots of space here so you can make this as big or as small as you'd like. It's just a practice sheet. And I'm going to load that aqua painter up again. And this time I'm going to wet the rich razzleberry and move that paint around. And then I'm going to wet the Bermuda Bay. And instead of allowing them to dry in between, I am going to blend those two colors in the center. I hope you can see that. How this is kind of a wet blend where they, they blend because they're meeting and overlapping and you can just do a wash all the way across. Okay, back to the hard edge. Now that the rich razzleberry has dried, I'm going to um, wet the Bermuda Bay but I am not going to go over the edge of the rich razzleberry. I'm just going to pull that color and create a wash. So you can see this has a hard line here where the two colors meet. The graded wash is used, for instance, on an apple or an orange, something where you want to create a light source going down um, where you're going to see the color variation. So let's say I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to do that, let's see, with my yellow because it's the lightest, the Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to do the top edge because my light source is coming from here. And so I am going to put my lightest color there. And then I am going to take and fill the center here with my pumpkin pie. Because as the light's going around the sphere, it's becoming less and less obvious and it is creating a shadow. And then the bottom I'm going to do with the real red. So you always want to start from the lightest color so that you're pulling the color into each other. And I'm going to get this top edge wet and start blending. And I hope you can see this, how the yellow blends into the um, orange, the pumpkin pie, and then the pumpkin pie into the real red. And you can add water to this to lighten it if you want and pull that color out so that it's more obvious or add color to that darker area. And by taking color away you can even create a light source or a white area if you'd like. Although there is a white color pencil that you can do that with also. Excuse me, watercolor pencil. Okay, the graduated wash. This is simply a single color that starts dark and goes light. So I've applied my old olive pencil here. I'm going to start from the lighter edge because that way you have less color and you're building up to that medium shade and all the way up to a dark shade. And of course, you can go back down and blend some more if you choose to. Okay, a flat wash is exactly what it sounds like. It's simply a color that um, is applied all over. You start at the top and you work your way down. And it's simply um, a wash that you could use for backgrounds or around something. So once again, color, load your aqua painter and move that around the way that you want to. It's great for using around stamps and background images. Okay, I've moved this a little bit so you can see this next part. I've got some types of watercolor pencils, marks that you can make that'll give you different effects and give you texture and color. So this first one is called stippling. And stippling is done with a watercolor pencil um, to create a light palette of color and or add color to it. So let's say I want to do the Daffodil Delight and the Pumpkin Pie. Stippling is marks that are made with the tip of the pencil that are kept fairly far apart when you want it light. Okay, If you wanted to add a two-tone effect, you can add some of the complementary color, in this case pumpkin pie, and that's going to give you a, um, a light wash. The next one is medium, 
And so I'm going to pick two different colors so it's a little easier for you to see. I'm going to start with the Calypso Coral. And these time, this time the marks are closer together so that I get more color. And I'm going to add that real red on top of that stippling towards the bottom to give me more color. And of course, the darkest, you're going to start with the stippling on your paper so that it's very close together. You're getting more watercolor pencil, and that's going to give you more color. Now this simply gives you different textures and different ways to add color to your images depending on how you like to color your images. So you're going to want to make sure that this darkest has the most stippling marks so that you get more color. Hatching is a single side motion. So if you start far apart, you're going to get lighter. And if you get them close together, you're going to end up with a darker color, of course. Cross hatching is very similar. You're going to start with your marks going in the one direction, and then you're going to come back and add a second set or cross hatch. Um, and of course, same idea. If you put the colors closer together, those cross hatches are going to create more depth and a darker value. The back and forth motion is real simple. It's simply back and forth. And of course, the tighter you get, the more color you're going to have. So by spreading it out, you're going to have less pigment on the paper. And the last one is scrumbling. And that's a simple burnishing where you're doing it in a circular motion to give you lots of color. So there's the basic worksheet. It's just a matter of playing and finding what you like the best. If you would like any of these products, feel free to stop by my online store. It's open 24-7 and you can get there from my blog, stampwithjenny.com. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and would like a catalog, email me with your name, phone number, and address, and I'll be happy to send you one. Thanks for joining me.